Well, good morning. This is Joe Van Cleve. Today I'm coming to you with another in a series of videos about pinhole box camera ideas. Today's video, we're going to talk about how to make pinhole box cameras out of these photo video storage boxes that you see in craft stores. I'm going to give you a couple ideas on what you can do with these. So stay tuned. Okay, so when you go to the craft store and look for one of these boxes, you'll see them in all kinds of different colors and patterns, but they're all pretty much the same size. And they're designed originally for VHS cassette tapes and 4x6 photo lab prints. Um, but I noticed this box a few years ago at my Hobby Lobby, and it's covered in black uh, felt. And the inside of the lid, is also covered in black felt. And so it became obvious to me that this was a, a light tight box, felt against felt, which it is. Um, so it becomes natural that you want to use it as a pinhole camera. Uh, one thing is you don't want to press too much on the side of it because you can see where you might be able to get a light leak in there. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I decided to put the film plane in the bottom of the camera instead of inside the lid because if there was a little bit of a light leak hitting in there, it has to reflect off the inside surface of the lid and bounce back into the camera. So it, it kind of reduces the chances of a light leak. Um, so what you want to do is, first of all, the inside of the camera and the inside of the lid, you want to spray paint flat black. Then to uh, make your shutter and pinhole mechanism, you cut a square hole <laughs> into the lid and then you can attach your piece of brass or whatever you're using for your pinhole in it with a piece of gaffer's tape uh, on the back side or duct tape. I prefer gaffer's tape. And then um, I'm using a pivoting shutter that's simply a piece of masonite board. There's a piece of black uh, craft felt glued to it so it sort of slides on the felt and makes a light tight seal. And I have a little wooden knob and I'm using a just a bolt and a, a washer and a nylon locking nut to hold that uh, pivot point in place. Then I usually use another piece of uh, masonite board as a stop for the shutter to support it. I also have my uh, focal ratio of my pinhole camera, which is the focal length divided by the size of the pinhole, and my X number, which is derived from that, and that tells me how to meter uh, for the exposure. So that's how you modify the lid for the shutter and pinhole. Then the camera itself, you're going to want to put the, the paper, usually photo paper is what I use, into the camera. Now these uh, boxes are wide enough for 8x10 paper, but they're not quite tall enough. So you either have to use a curved film plane to fit the 8x10 paper in there, or you trim the paper down to fit it. Now I, in these cameras I have, I trim the paper down. So but the paper fits kind of tightly inside here and you're going to change the paper out with a changing box or a changing bag. The question is, it's not really very easy to sometimes to get the paper out because it's tied up against the, the back of the box. There's no real room for your fingers to get around it and you don't want to scratch or wrinkle the paper, right? So what I came up with was I'm using a, car a cardboard insert. Um, it's a piece of shirt cardboard and I have a little flange, a little lip on both sides, like a little slot, and the photo paper kind of fits inside of it, okay? Then on um, both sides of the box, this end and this end, I have some gaffer's tape attached there. And what I do is this piece of cardboard has these two little gaffer's tape loops and you basically pull it out of the camera and then you can change out the paper in this piece of cardboard and then you can set the cardboard back into the camera and I'm using masking tape, little loops of masking tape, painter's masking tape, just to hold the flaps up against the box because if you don't do that, those two flaps might fall down and obstruct part of the picture. But that's basically how you load the paper. It's held in with a little cardboard holder. Um, and then I use a couple large uh, wide rubber bands uh, which I store in the box so 
this is in the changing bag. I'm going to close up the box with a couple rubber bands. And then I can take the box, making sure the shutter is closed, I can take the box out of the changing bag, mount it to my tripod, and I'll be ready to shoot. Um, these photo storage boxes have a little index thing for, for labeling what's in the box. Well, I make three little labels. One says, <coughs> here it is, one says empty, one says loaded, and one says exposed. Okay, so this helps me keep track of what's the status of the box. Do I, I don't want to open it if there's paper in it in bright daylight, for instance, and fog it. So that's how that simple box camera works. This one is F275. I have another one that's basically built almost identical to it. It's F300, so the pinhole in this one's just a little bit smaller and it's a little bit sharper, but it takes a little bit longer exposure times. Let me now show you how we mount these cameras to the tripod. So obviously these, uh, cam these camera boxes being made out of cardboard and whatnot are pretty flimsy and it would be really kind of impractical and difficult to mount a tripod bushing right on the box itself. Uh, so what I've come up with is a system where I take an old piece of plywood or MDF board in this case, this is just a scrap from some other project, but I put a, a tripod, a quarter 20 tripod bushing in the bottom of it and in this one, I have four little screw eyes uh, mounted to the corners of the little uh, uh, platform. And it's just about the right size to sit on the bottom of the box or for the box to sit on top of it. So you would uh, lock this into your tripod, set your camera up right on there. And then I'm using, uh, reaching off camera here, I'm using these short little bungee cords. And they happen to be just the perfect size for uh, looping around the, uh, the screw eye. So I put one on that side and one on that side. And that's how I'm able to uh, attach these boxes, these cardboard boxes to the, uh, to the tripod. And uh, so I can, once you have both bungee cords in place, they don't generally move around. So it's a fairly stable system and I've gotten some pretty good pictures off of it. So it's nice having more than one of these boxes uh, to carry with you. Uh, you can carry them in a shopping bag or whatever. Um, and so you'll have a couple large format uh, pinhole cameras to use. Um, so like I say, I have two of these, these made up with that kind of box. Um, now, what if um, you wanted to take more than just two pictures and you didn't want to carry a whole handful of these big boxes? Well, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I've worked on different ideas over the years for having multiple shots in a camera. Um, obviously with these kind of cardboard cameras, you don't want to, uh, you can't really easily adapt them for sheet film holders, which are also expensive and heavy. So I've come up with several ideas in the past for making uh, multiple shots in a camera. One of those is the carousel cameras and the other one is the falling plate cameras. Um, the third idea is the storage slot camera. This again is a camera that you use with a changing bag. So this is another manifestation of the storage slot camera. Again, it's using one of these photo video storage boxes. This was a black box that I bought at the store. It's not felt covered, um, but it's black. Um, and it is also uh, black on the inside already, so I, I didn't have to spray paint it. But this particular one, I wanted to build a storage slot system. And so the, the way it works is the camera is actually held vertically. And I knew from previous experience that the, the problem with these boxes sometimes is that they're very lightweight, but they have a lot of area to them. So if it's windy, they kind of act like a sail and they kind of want to vibrate a little bit on the tripod. So this one, I took a heavy piece of three quarter inch plywood and glued it to the bottom. Actually, I believe I used machine screws and nuts and washers but it's a fairly, really nice piece of wood. It has a tripod bushing and there's four screws that hold it in on the camera itself under the side of it. Now, because the way the lid has to fit on it, you need a little gap in here to fit the lid. And so I have a spacer of thin model aircraft plywood that gives you room for the, for the lid to go in there. But this is a five by seven inch format camera. And the camera section is in the top and the storage slot section is in the bottom. 
And the way you change it out is you lay it on your lap in the changing bag. And this storage compartment for the paper is made of black foam core board and gaffer's tape. It sits sideways in the box camera like that with its open end facing away from where the pinhole is and you basically rotate it up and you have two storage compartments, one for exposed and one for unexposed paper. These compartments are almost an inch and a quarter, maybe inch and a half wide, so you could put 150 sheets of paper, uh, really, I mean enough for, you know, a week's long vacation, okay? So there is a piece of cardboard that again holds the uh, the paper negative in place so it makes it easier to remove. So let me put this storage compartment back. The piece of cardboard sits like this. There is a loop of painter's masking tape. The negative goes in here and it, the tape supports the negative. And then because this side of the cardboard it really serves as a handle, um, and there's a loop of gaffer's tape. It kind of wants to flop down, so what I do is I, the little loop of gaffer's tape here, I fold it over the edge of the box and then close the lid on it, and that keeps it from uh, flopping down into the picture. I wanted to show you the lid. The lid is very simple. Again, a little square hole cut into the box, a piece of gaffer's tape around it, my piece of brass pinhole taped onto it with another piece of gaffer's tape, and then the shutter is just a piece of model aircraft plywood that I've cut down and, and just made a little shutter shape. And there's a little screw, washer, and nylon locking nut. And then there's a little dowel, a wooden dowel, just as a stopper. So it's a real simple camera. It puts out really sharp images. It's, it's uh, very stable on the tripod because of the heavy base, low center of gravity nice rigid construction and very lightweight and again it gives you the ability to have hundreds literally hundreds of uh, eight, five by seven uh, photos and a pinhole camera so this has been uh, two different ideas for photo video storage box pinhole cameras i hope you've liked this and hope it gives you some inspirational ideas for your own camera making projects until next time uh, this is joe van cleave happy shooting <laughs>